Hey guys, in this video, we are going to start putting those manual adjustments to work. Now, in the last two videos, we did the manual speed up method and the manual slow down method. And I hope you've been practicing with both hands on both turntables because you definitely don't want to be like over here doing this and doing this. You know, you can if you want to, uh, but you kind of want to be ambidextrous with these techniques. So definitely practice on both hands. So now let's put these manual adjustments to work. Uh, for these exercises, you're going to want to have two of the same song, two of the same record on both turntables. And you're going to want to have your pitch control or your tempo fader, as some people call it, set at the same speed. So in this case, I have them both set to the zero point in the middle. So I know that these are both essentially playing at the same speed. Now, we're going to start this technique with the baby scratch and the release scratch. And I taught you guys how to do that in the turntable series DJ Basics course. So for those of you who haven't watched that course, you don't know how to baby scratch or release scratch, definitely check that out uh, because it's gonna set you up for this course. And in that course, we talked about the importance of dropping it accurately, but we're all human. Uh, and even someone with 21 years of experience like myself will still, you know, not always drop it perfectly on beat. So what do you do? You do manual adjustments. So we're also only gonna focus on one side at a time. And that's a tip whenever you're manually beat matching. And the reason why is because if you're adjusting multiple audio sources at the same time with your adjustments, they'll start to get confusing. And it's a lot easier and quicker and more efficient just to focus on one audio source at a time. And then you know where you are, okay? So I'm gonna start playing this track. And we're gonna do the four baby scratches and then I'm going to release it. And for these exercises, we talked about dropping it on the one in past uh, lessons in the DJ Basics course. For this, while well, you know, just so you're getting uh, acclimated with these techniques, you don't always have to wait for the one. You can if you want, uh, but you can drop it anywhere just to practice these techniques. So I'm doing my baby scratches, just getting it ready, making sure it's there. Okay. Forward, 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 drop. So I just dropped it and you hear the beats are sort of shuffled. They're not exactly on beat. Okay, so what do I do? I could freak out, but that doesn't do anything. So the best way to figure out if it's too fast or too slow is to just make a move, any move. Now, if you know you pushed it too hard or too fast, then you know to slow it down. And if you know you dropped it too slow, like a delay, then you know to speed it up. But what if you don't know? Okay, so I'm gonna just make a move, any move. I'm gonna start speeding it up. See if it sounds better. That sounds worse, a lot worse. But that's the best thing I could have done other than actually do it correctly. It's the second best thing I could have done because now I know what to do. I know to slow it down. hear that? Also, uh, it creates a cool effect when it's two of the same song, sort of a flange effect. So that's how you know you're on as well. Now, what if I slow it down too much? Okay, what do I do? I just speed it up again. And you don't always have to do a continuous, you know, like this, right? You can just do a little bit. But, oh, I speeded it up too much. Let's slow it down. And now, what am I listening for? Okay, in hip hop and broken beat stuff, uh, like we talked about in the DJ Basics course, I listen for the snares. That helps me because it's consistent and it's on two and four of every bar, typically. So I'm matching up the snares in my head, listening. I have a speaker over here. You can also practice with the headphones. And that clap or snare is what I'm listening for. I'm not listening to like the hi-hats or anything else, but you practice and uh, listen for what helps you. I mean, it might not be the snares. It might be uh, the hi-hats. So it's all subjective depending on what works best for you. But uh, typically 
Uh, the snare is loud and cuts through and it's always usually on two and four, so it's consistent. So that's a good way, a good thing to listen to. And just practice and try to go through the whole song and see how uh, long you can keep it on. Now, and if you drop it perfectly, mess it up. So say I dropped it perfectly, I would just mess it up and then practice my slowdown method. So that was two regular vinyl records. Now we're going to move to uh, two control vinyls. Ta-da! <laughs> so now we have control vinyl on the turntables. And uh, I do want to note one other thing that's unique to turntables before we move forward. Um, they get out of tune sometimes. So depending on how old they are or how much use they've gotten, uh, the calibration could be off, meaning uh, the calibration with the tempo fader, the pitch control. So you could have two of the same song and you could have them at the same uh, place on both pitch controls. But if they aren't calibrated correctly, one could play a little faster or a little slower than the other one. Uh, so uh, one way to check this out, especially if you have DJ software, you can literally see it in the software, you know, how uh, fast or slow this is actually playing where it is on the pitch control. So that's something to note and super important to remember that, especially when you're going to a nightclub or something like that and you're not using your own turntable. So you may be used to the way yours are, are calibrated uh, or yours may be tuned perfectly, uh, but when you get to the club, you never know. So as, uh, usually when I go to a club, I like to uh, put two of the same song on both sides and then uh, beat match it, which you're gonna learn in later lessons how to do that, but beat match it so that I can see, uh, oh, this one's playing at 128, but it's slightly uh, above this one here. So now I know this one's always going to be, I'm always going to have to push it slightly a little more uh, to the right, for instance. That's just an example. And we'll talk more about that later. But just so you guys know, um, because you're on turntables, that's something that you have to keep in mind. Okay, so now we have uh, two of the same song again, uh, but they're house songs. And I want you guys to see in the software, I'm showing you on Serato DJ rather than Tractor because Serato has a really co cool feature where you can actually see the beats lining up. So if you look right here, you can see this. And then uh, if I click right here, you can change it. So I'm gonna change it to horizontal just so you can see. And you can really see uh, the transients. And then if you have your tracks beat gridded, you can see the beat grid lines right here. So this is also another tool for you to see if it's too fast or too slow. That said, when you're learning this, I really want you guys, you know, you can start off if you're using a Serato DJ, you can start off by looking just so you uh, can see what it looks like and then hear what that sounds like when it's too fast or too slow. But then once you know, like what it sounds like, I want you to put your laptop to the side or cover the screen if it's in front of you so you can't cheat, okay? so. You can always mix with your eyes and that's an added feature that you have with Serato DJ. However, you really want to learn to mix with your ears too, above and beyond mixing with your eyes because also the software, you know, it could look like it's on, but it's not really on. Uh, so you will always know for sure by using your ears. So I'm going to show you again what we just did and you can kind of watch the screen and see how the transients shift. And I have this song looped just so it stays at that constant uh, bass kick. Okay, so I just dropped it. Dropped it pretty close. But if you look at this right here, it's slightly shifted, right? Just slightly. Now, I'm gonna mess it up on purpose. I'm gonna speed it up. Can you see that? It's shifting. So in this case, when it's horizontal, if one track is ahead of the other, it's going to be leaning towards the left side. So as you can see, the more I speed it up, it goes more to the left. I slow it down. It goes to the right, okay? So now you can also look at the up and down vertical one, which I actually I prefer even though it's shorter because you can definitely tell. Okay, so let's see this track up again. So for uh, a track that's too slow, 
it goes down. The slow track is lower in terms of the transients, and if it's too fast, the slow track is higher, okay? So here you can see I'm doing some adjustments and I'm just using the slow down method with the platter to get it on beat. And then if I slow it too much, up, oh, what do I do? I speed it up. Now I can leave it and enjoy myself. I just, you know, beat match these songs to the same. Uh, however, it could drift. Even if they're perfectly on or whatever, it could still drift. So uh, it's good to keep keep listening. You know, don't just be like, oh, I got it on, done. <laughs> you know, you don't want to just uh, forget it. Uh, definitely, you always want to focus um, and making sure it stays on. So here it got slightly off. And again, this is a loop. So it's shifting a little bit as well. And that's another uh, advantage that you guys with Serato or Tractor for that matter have is you can loop a portion of the song if you're learning these techniques and just uh, stay with that loop. And then once you get good at it, then take the loop off and then try to go through the entire song like we did in, uh, with the last uh, regular vinyl and try to uh, keep it on as long as you possibly can. And then you go through the entire song on one, you're doing all the adjustments on your right side, and then start this track over and do the adjustments on this side when you drop this one in and try to go through the entire song with uh, this one playing all the way through. So that is putting some of your manual adjustments to work. If you wanna learn more, check out the next video.